smurf and whatnot, so super comfortable pick. We saw Pure, of course, he's playing his Morphling again. He had some very successful games on this, and Topson playing a nice scaling Zeus, which can do well versus a PL in a lot of instances. But let's see if they can withstand the pressure that Vetboop oh, has, because their draft just looks terrifying. Yeah, look, this should be a GPK, Dragon Knight, Mirror on the Beastmaster. There's going to be a lot of pushing, yes. a lot of early towers being potentially taken, unless Tundra can sort of form together the, the defenses. I mean, they have heroes that are going to be able to enter into these early fights uh, pretty soon in the game, right? You've got like the Clockwork, the Pango. These can really start the brawls and, and maybe be that D push that they need to relieve the pressure and give time for Pure to be able to carry this on his morph. Yeah, time will definitely be needed, because that pressure is going to come early. Beastmaster, DK, they're going to force the issue. These lanes, they look quite strong too, right? The SD, the Beastmaster, if they, which ideally they will, but they'll probably set those one up, versus a Clock and a Morphling. I've seen a lot of times now this SD versus the Clock in lane. The Clock just can't do anything. You use Battery Assault, he puts you under, fights you with Illusions, or just gets the Illusions of the carry and throws them on you, and it's problematic. So let's see how Tundra looks to solve the issues of this here too. As picking an early Rubik as well. Looking at the spells he can steal. Yeah, what's it ended up like? I mean, there's some decent stuns and stuff. If he can get Roar, it's probably the best one, but we'll see what Nine Class is able to get on this hero, because it's not like there's some godly one that he can actually get. Oh, we will see. Bet Boom, they don't want to try and fight around this bouncy. As soon as the shield crash was coming in, they back away. And let's see these wards that are placed out very early. So, double sentries placed around the Ancients, of course, and the hard camp, so wanting to prevent stacks coming out from Save and from Yarrow. So it looks like to me like they're trying to smash this bottom lane, right? White Mon really wants to put the pressure on with Pure so that they have to go back to stack, but then they can't because they're blocked up. So I'm going to be looking at this bottom lane quite a bit here. Uh, for, for Pure, what does sort of the outlook of the whole game go, uh, looks, kind of look like for him? If they don't get run over in the early stages, is it a, a pretty simple morph game or is the PL always going to have that kind of favorable matchup in some parts. I haven't seen that, that matchup actually yeah, in quite a long time, to be honest with you, so not 100% sure, but it doesn't look the easiest for Pure by any means. He's playing versus the SD also, which is pretty obnoxious, just being able to save targets over and over again. There's hard lockdown as well. There's a lot, right? Yeah, there's so. Dragon Tail into the raw, potential follow-ups, arrow from Arana. It, yep. If they can start the jump on him, it's going to take a lot in terms of items and moves for Tundra to try and bail him out of those situations. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see how that one plays out. And on this top lane, how's pressure going to be on the, the PL uh, in, in this early stage? Obviously, Nightfall coming in with the last pick. Has it ended up a situation where he, he should be fine as the carry on these early waves? Uh, I mean, they do have the harassment that's constantly coming from the Mirana, but I've been seeing these offlane pangos do better versus these illusion heroes. As we saw yesterday in particular, JT versus the, versus the Naga kind of smashed the game, so... I have to watch the first couple waves how he's able to do. I think Toby should be pretty fine up here. Will be likely to be difficult for Toronto Tokyo to make any crazy early moves. I thought probably going to be need to need to be babysat for quite some time against these two with the spam that they have. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty passive lane from the side of Betboom, I'd imagine. Unless there's a big mistake that comes out from Tundra, just feeding Tangos to the PL, making sure that he can keep that farm going. I see Toronto Tokyo started with six and he bought an immediate extra three, so just wanted to pass those over. Yeah, Nightfall looks like he should be pretty good actually to be able to get this farm consistent versus Toby. And then the mid lane, Topson versus GPK on this. Zeus versus DK. Nothing crazy is going to be happening over here, right? This is free farm for the both of them, mm -hmm. for the most part. The only thing that could happen is maybe a rotation, right? Because there's very strong rotations, I would say, from the side of Bet Boom and SD and Amirana could look to swing over and get a catch. Um, the CS so far, we do see with the pressure that Save and Mira are being able to put on this bottom lane, it's just a bit of a slower start for Pure. Let's see if they can get any of these boars to get the deny. Can they get the second one? Nope. Playing it really nicely down here on the side of Bep. That's a strong lane. Very strong one. Not going to be an easy start for Pure. They're trying to see each time if they can try and get in potentially onto a save. It's just never easy to do so. Between the illusions and the boar and the hawk and everything, it's going to be pretty difficult for Whitemon to really use Battery Assault too effectively. Even though it does, of course, extra damage to these creeps and whatnot. It's illusions don't care. My top lane just... Trying to get this lane in a bit of a better position. Ouch, Pure missed the money creep because that pause, I think, actually. It kind of hurts. Lotuses, it looks like it's going to be both claimed here from Bat Boom. So on top of getting a bit of CS advantage here in the first few waves, especially, they'll be able to get those as well to keep the pressure going. Uh, very difficult, of course, to get on top of Toronto Tokyo at these early stages. He's perfectly fine. He's got Wands, he's got Lotus. Oh, cool. We see GPK do the... 
gloves before the second brace here on the DK this time around, just ensure these last hits. I love when people do the gloves. I feel like I talk about it quite a bit, so we'll talk too much about it. The attack speed's just so nice when you're able when you're not under pressure in a lane from a hero, you'll just be able to CS so much nicer because you're high base damage and reducing the damage of the enemy mid laner. Absolutely, yeah, that's just for the early levels of spam with the arc lining, it's not gonna threaten this no. DK at all now for those no. early items on GPK. Not at all. Here perfectly safe. Here's gonna be a bit careful. He's dropping low. Let's be cautious here with the shifting. The pressure just continues to, to build up on this bottom lane. Now soon we'll start to see the tier one take a bit of damage here. Yeah, now it's like those two sentries that they did place, you know, Whitemon buying extra sentries to block those ancient stuff. They're not even going back to go for the stacks. He should be able to clean up the board here. Nicely done from Whitemon, but now... Maybe try and look from that. Cogs Whoa. are down. I mean, as hard as it is for him to go on them, it's also very difficult for them to turn, as long as the, the cogs are always available for him. Pure's? The lane is not in the best That's position awesome here for Pure. He's going to eat a ton of harassment stepping up here. And it's going to continue pushing out. I see another wave coming forward. So a slow start for Pure. But Nightfall also is getting slowed down a little bit up here from the pressure That's from true. the two of pretty them. Similar. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Bounty. Bracer picked up on PL. He's just safer though, right? Like he's getting he's missing some last hits and stuff like that, but he's full HP. So under no real kill threat on the side of Nightfall. Pure, I guess, technically isn't either, as long as he plays it safe these Morphling players are just very good at doing. Five minutes. Nice and slow. GPK actually buying himself a Blood Grenade. This is kind of cool. I've seen... I think I've seen him do this before on the mid-DK where he goes for kills by himself. Okay, well, yes, you get with the six, the other dragon, yeah. and then you just kind of full just commit. commit. Yeah, I Maybe think even I, look for the dive play. I've seen a couple players even do it on, like, and this is some time ago, but, like, mid-Earthshakers and stuff. You just go for the commit. You go for that big kill. Could work out. As long as the rotation comes, we'll have to see around that six minute power run who's going to make the first I mean, move. Yeah, if you get Toronto Tokyo in the neighborhood and he's able to line up an arrow off the back of Dragon Tail setup, yep. absolute chance at a kill potential in the mid. Of course, the, the TPs in return could definitely bail out. Topson, if he gets gone upon, if Whitemon gets in and is able to push them back with the cogs, should be able to give enough space to allow Topson to get out of that sort of uh, attempt from Betboo. And here comes this move already. Double supports from Betboo. Imagine we'll see the Tundra supports look to start moving too. But it's DK level 6 with the Catapult Wave already shoving in. Tundra will have to bring a few over if they do want to try and stop Beppin from taking control of the power room. But as it is indeed with the two supports, it's an easy pick up here for GPK. They'll get himself the Dragon Form and the Illusion. Topson, be careful how far you step up here too. They really want to look for the dive here. If they can get any sort of setup, they'll be straight in onto Topson. So Tundra as a team, they've got to be prepared. They have to know. No, nobody, no, none of the supports have shown in the side lane for like 40 seconds, so. I'll save. He's trying to stay far back, but and he's And here's caught. the TPs. Immediately they're ready. The arrow connection will be there, but Whitemon's in with the TP. He'll step over towards GPK with the battery and stop. They got him anyway. Done. Topson's been brought down. Now let's see if they can turn over for more. Whitemon backing off under the tier two. Same to be said for nine class. Whitemon's going to fall pretty low. He should be fine, but Bepim getting away with that move. It, it did indeed look like he knew. were ready for yeah. it, but it didn't matter. The damage was done. Nothing could be done there in order to save Topson. Honestly, it was, he was in his best of a position I feel like you could have. He was so far back and still gets caught from it there. Incoming. Nice arrow from Toronto, Tokyo. Wisdom runes. Looks like 9 class already set up for his. Two TPs forced to try to react. And how much uh, mid tower actually only took like 600 damage, but still something there from that first DK form. They'll return back to the side lanes to support the pet being back in. You can absolutely imagine that when that eight minutes comes there again, they could look to do a very similar play. I mean, if Tundra weren't able to stop it happening with the TPs that they brought in previously, Pure, oh go my down. god, oh. he stayed too low, level three axes. Oh, I hope we can get a replay of that one. I was, well, I, I think he had an extra stack that's, on that's him gonna, too. That, you don't expect that oh. to happen. He tanked on point blank, he just tried oh. to hit Nero. What happened there? We'll, we'll see if we can get oh. that. It's not gonna look pretty, I'll tell you that. And we've got it right here. All right, look, he just tanked it. He had uh, four stacks already, so he took the six Completely stack. Completely just caught by surprise by that, by that damage. I mean, that's a huge kill there for Mira to get, you know, level Radiant's six. Yeah. Get, getting a solo kill against the Morph like that before you've, you've got the Roar online. I mean, this is the dream for Mira's Beastmaster. It's like more than the dream, right? Like it, being able to get a Dominator yeah. this early, like we're talking oh. about the pressure that Bedroom's able to apply. There's not really the easiest ways for them to deal with a DK plus a Helm of Over, like a Helm of Dominator slash Overlord that's early. Crazy. That's really big for the side of Bedroom. A rare mistake there from Pure. Uh, a carry player that's, in terms of his mechanics, have been pretty perfect this event. Something you just don't expect, right? Those max axes. Maybe he thought it was just level two axes or something, level three, four, but Miero, I love this build. 
big magic damage versus that morph. Right, if it's going to catch him by surprise like that, it's worth it yeah. every time, that build. For sure. Back to the lane, White Mont. Ready here with Pure. Making sure that the, the sort of situation doesn't arise again. And if that sort of moves attempted, White Mont will be able to disrupt it with the, the cogs and maybe even try and threaten Mirror. But as you say, it's going to be hard. The fact that he's got this early helm. But the one thing is, like, at the same time, look, I'm just keep looking at Nightfall's farm, and he's actually still behind Pure. So he's getting slowed down quite a lot just from that. I mean, it's mostly been Toby just sitting up here playing versus him. Nightfall's actually queued up the Midas. This might be one of the first Midas's I feel like I'm seeing on one of these carries. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in terms of when we've sort of seen PLs in the past, right, this has been a build that they do yeah. like to go sometimes, and everything going off to a pretty good start elsewhere. Definitely reason to believe that Nightfall can look to play the scaling game and go for this Midas into Ags. Yeah, he's just going for full greed. He just wants to play that, you know, the eventual point where the PL versus Morphling matchup becomes quite, well, used to become pretty impossible for Morphling, so. If his team is having such a good time in the mid lane and the off lane, yeah, he definitely feels like he can go greed. A slow pace game, though. A non class. A white one. They were looking to see if they can maybe get some sort of setup or grab around the tier one, but that boomer not giving it to them. Difficult when you're playing versus the shadow demon as well, too. If you just overstep your bounds a little bit, he gets a save. Things could be. Things could quickly turn on your head. GPK, GPK soon blink. It's going to be so close. Yeah, and at that point, up. you can move around the map. What with sort of just three of these heroes. And the sort of jump kill potential is going to be very high very early on from Bet Boom. And the side of Tundra overall, like they don't really have that clear cut initiator. It's going to be yeah, Toby rolling in with a rolling thunder from the sidelines, but it's not a blink stun into some follow up. It's going to be a little bit slower for them to build up that kind of catch and chase. It's going to take quite a long time for them to have that natural initiator. I mean, White Mon, yes, he'll have his hook shots soon, but hook shotting into this Bet Boom lineup could be pretty scary. Once they start getting these timings, of course. But yeah, farm is still keeping pretty consistent, so. They've just got a lot of difficult heroes to kill. Yeah. Even if you get the jump on them, they're, they're likely to be able to survive, turn it around, or just straight up escape. Yep, Mirana just leaps away, PL just opples away. A lot of different difficult ways for them to die. GPK amplified damage, and he's got the blink. So you can see some rotations coming out soon. Save. He continues to just getting these big stacks going to enable the Beastmaster in the meantime, but Catapult Wave, it's coming in. Do they want to make a move over here? Let's see where GPK looks to go at this blink reveal. Top lane would probably be the, the easier one to connect with. They do have pretty good vision themselves going down the river towards the, the bottom side of the map, though, Bet Boom. So maybe that will be where he tries to play. So right now, they seem content with just yeah, chilling, finishing up these stacks, getting this timing here. This is giving time, though, Toby. I believe his defusal is soon finished. Yeah, a lot of stacks. Farm, of course, still very close. And we'll see now that the six has been hitting here on the clock. They're ready to go for some sort of a move. White Mont, ready to swing over with Topson. See if they can burst through one of these heroes. They've got good ways to scout. That's what the clock and the Zeus, we've seen this combo kind of picked up a lot more. I think top, uh, Tundra more than anyone, just to be able to find heroes. Oh, Nightfall. It would be the dream catch here. They get the setup. Hook oh. Oh, no. It's a swing and a miss there from Whitemon. They needed that to hit. Did the slow, I mean, maybe the slow just tricked him a little bit there, the phylactery slow. That's a painful miss. And now the rotation. Let's see where Bet Boom looks to punish with that since they see a Zeus Salt and a Clockwork Hood shot used. They're going to just hit mid tower yeah, and press their bottom. Straight in with the push. I mean, the TP's going to be coming in, but Toronto Tokyo is here as well. I mean, bottom tower is dead in seconds. It's a Dark Troll Summoner push. Nine class. He's going to be set up upon here by the disruption into the arrow. TP's are coming in. But with the damage and control that GPK can offer up, it's a quick pick. And White Mon, can't believe he finishes this TP. It's a little bit scary, especially with the tier one tower falling as low as it is, as GPK is just going to be able to continue with this push. Take this tower, and we are now starting to see that gold lead show itself here in favor of Bet with the way that they are just kind of crushing this early game. Yeah, out pressuring it and out out efficiency with the stack, oh, at least from yeah. seeing. And, and the fact that Nightfall is going to be you know, running this Midas, which is currently on its way out to him. Yep. There's a lot of problems that are building up that Tundra, they've got to try and find some answers for soon. Absolutely. Done. Yeah, because Pure just... We'll have to see, of course, that matchup. I mean, we assume the PL, of course, still does excellent versus the Morph because things haven't changed too much for it. So if he's able to get away with this and get these items online while his team just pressures, it's going to be pretty damn nice for this Phantom Lancer. Here's Miro. That's a good Stand catch. Damage to hit. And Miro 
No, I don't think he's getting out of this one. He's trying to turn he with gets the, the roar off. He might have a chance to escape. The backup comes in. A disruption stays there from stay, but Toby has the rolling thunder. Another lightning bolt comes down. Pull the roar. First kill. It's enough to try for a setup on a GPK, but GPK is still very, very tanky here. They're in with the swash buckle. Jump forward with the shield crash. Tundra. They'll get themselves on the Ooh. scoreboard as Topson finds a double kill. Nine class finds the best deal in the game. He actually does get the roar. Able to lock down this D this DK who doesn't isn't able to actually finish any target. GPK blinked forward to try to finish off, I believe, the clockwork and actually just puts himself in a worse position. Yeah, they needed that big time. Toby. Hey, Tundra. Yeah, Toby coming in clutch really. His damage is I mean nothing to laugh at there. You saw even the DK. I think quite some damage. Able to set up the fight perfectly for Topson to just get his complete toolkit off without any sort of pressure on him. Yeah, look at that. The damage is done, and Topson gets a very nice burst of gold. Let's bring things back to zero. I bet Boom likely to be much more careful about how they go around those jumps next time. Yeah, perhaps looking to maybe finish up the... Maybe they just finish up the Helm of Overlord. I think so. I, mean, I think that's probably the time. They're making so many stacks for him yeah. uh, with these Ancient. He does continue to get very, very good farm. Is it, as if you can see, you know, going to be a catch-up game for Nightfall, but with the Midas, he should be able to close that gap at the moment. I'm still surprised how poor he actually is. I feel like he's been left alone for quite some time, and he's still not able to keep up with the rest of the cores. It'll, he will eventually, of course, but... It's still just surprising to see that he is at the bottom when he has literally, it feels like he's gotten very little pressure on him except for that one rotation that they put. Yeah, when, when, when you have the mark shot. Oh, I mean, Leaps are at the ready. Yeah, he's Not going to get them the kill here. Toronto Tokyo perfectly fine. Moonlight Shadow's up. He's away. Pure. It's going to go straight for the Lincolns this game by the looks of it. Make sure he has that protection against the initiation from Bebe Boom. Very good Lincolns game. Yeah. Roar Disruption. DK stun, always going to provide him a ton of extra extra sustain and survivability. Game's slowing down a little bit. Hook shot, going to be back up in about 20 seconds. Tundra still positioned on bottom, looking for Miero perhaps one more time. I do show, of course, with Toby, so unlikely that Miero's going to step up too far. It's going to certainly suspect that something's being planned around here. They'll, oh, this is cool. And Tundra, indeed, they'll, they'll play with that knowledge that Bet Boom's going to assume that the play is down bottom. Uh, in mind, they'll look to swing over towards the top side. See if they can maybe find something big. Of course, Nightfall's relatively close, but with the Thunder God's Wrath being popped, he's going to know they're after him. So Tundra, they'll settle for save instead. Whoa! I mean, the roar is probably about to be ending. Yeah, the steel's yeah, moved on, but that's still two hooks he's used. That's a rolling thunder and a hook shot, so the other cores on Bepboom probably can feel some, some safety now off of that. I mean, but Tundra will take any kill they can get. It still feels really good whenever they can get any of these to make the space for pure. He's under no pressure when all these heroes keep dying. I'm quite aggressively here, pure. I mean, once he has the Lincolns, he should be able to do so. I say, it will be tricky for Betbeam to get the setup onto him. Tuncha's making the the quicker moves right now. Bebo, of course, they're getting that farm. You see, it just continues to build up if there's any downtime there when they're, where Tundra's not making a move, but Tundra's still kind of hunting. Yeah, I mean, they've got the hookshot back up in 10 seconds. Bit difficult now for them to get a kill here onto GPK or Miro. The Helm of the Overlord is done and the Mage Slayer is done, so quite a lot tankier. Bebo, boom. They're going to take a bit of a page out of the Book of Tundra. They'll also smoke up and take the Twin Gate to try they can and catch Roche. them by surprise, Top or indeed maybe look for the Roshan. Yeah, I think it's going to get scanned, though, so immediate scan does come out. Looks like they wanted to set up for a kill, perhaps, first. No, they did see earlier that Pure was farming, pushing out this top area of I mean, the map, they, but Pure... His vision. It's, right on, it's right on top of him. Oh, they get that jump open. Guard. He should be pretty dead. Oh, and he's he, gone. PK is pretty much able to do it alone. Get him with the Dragon Tail stun. An easy kill here for the Dragon Knight. And it's the last, like, 40 seconds of the ward, too. That's the picture-perfect moment there for Bet Boom. And now, what, back up and Roche, or not quite yet? Probably could. They can yeah. look to threaten it, for sure. Yeah, with the Helm of Overlord, it always allows you to get this. Uh, interesting to point out, too. I, was, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody buy this item first. Uh, Toronto Tokyo bought the Ring of Taras as one of his first items, because he's just rushing a pipe. That's pretty well, It's like one of the hey. worst items on item value cool, of the game. Of yeah, but once you upgrade it... Yes. If he can get... I mean, which will probably be one of the quicker pipes, at least on, in this position sure. on Mirana. That will obviously add a lot to their early push and definitely make things difficult when it comes to trying to... To come in with a deep push. Now suddenly there's Zeus and Rocket Flares and Fade Bolt. 
that's not going to stop Pet Boom from knocking at your doorstep. I mean, it's a really cool approach, right? Because usually you just see like the mech picked up usually, but this game, he just it's, it's so game. much better for a pipe. Even though it's such a difficult item to purchase in mo most games, yeah, it is very valuable. Nightfall, Agnims is about to be finished, so he can actually look to start getting involved himself too. Yeah, and, and his farm's just going to skyrocket. Yeah, you know, now he's the, tied. The Midas Axe is online. This PL will likely very soon hit the top spot, unless somehow Tundra are able to make a move to try and get on top of this PL. But with they, the Aegis in the hands of Bet Boom on the Dragonite and GPK, it's pretty difficult for Tundra to enter in onto Bet Boom's side of the map right now. Absolutely. They did get a nice ward down during those last moments, though. When Cure was dying, I did see White Mom get sneak into the Ancient side, and he did get a ward down. So if any way there was for them to get him on Nightfall, it's with that, that ward that they have right now. Blink Dagger also picked up now here on the way out for save. So be much easier for him to get in a position with the disruptions to make it that little bit harder for Tundra to have a chance of bursting on someone and going on them at the start of a fight. And Toby, he's, uh, Toby's has gone for more of like a selfish build. He's gone down to just the Ags build, which is going to be great to clear, of course, these summons and these illusions inside the fight, but not having that follow-up now for the White Mon. They kind of just have to be in the perfect position around White Mon if he does find a shot. Not having that secondary follow-up just yet. Radiance Middle Tower. Everyone's just getting attack. that farm going. I'm just seeing the supports farming a lot more. I mean, they're, they're close to their items, right? As yep. say, you know, Toronto Tokyo is only about 300 gold away from having this completed pipe. And the impact of these two supports just feels very strong. Like, it, unless Nine Class is able to somehow get these godly steals, which is pretty difficult yeah. this game, it's really mostly the roar. It does feel difficult for them to have the similar impact of the other two supports, especially with Beplum scaling with the blink on save. He's always going to be in position. See if Tundra can find anything here with this rotation. They're looking towards bottom. It looks like they were kind of thinking about smoking, but then opted against it. It's just lanes. super hard for them to make a, a move on anyone. They see Toronto Tokyo yeah. was pushing out the waves, but it's not really the hero you want to be making the the gank towards. No, it's just tough heroes I to mean, really set up for, as you were saying from earlier. They're just elusive. Yeah, They yeah. might just have to settle for this if they see him, but he's already got his pipe finished. It's got to be one of the earlier support pipes I think that we've seen, because I don't think we've seen that many, at least first mm -hmm. item picked up. And they've still got a good amount of time to try and push with it. You're still about two and a half minutes left on the Aegis for GPK. Yeah, look, I think they might they might look to group up a little bit here soon. Yeah, their five-man group up at this stage is, is going to be incredibly strong and very just, difficult for Tundra to stop. It's just do they actually have to group up is the question. Nine, maybe they yeah, just look to fight it anyway. Might be but, like, let's keep yeah. farming, boys. It could you know, be. He's, having the point, uh, the, he's at this point of the game he, where... Nightfall, he shows himself. See if they can burst him. Yeah, but a doppelganger away. Moonlight Shadow, the hook shot. It's a good angle from White on the rolling thunders in. They should get him. They're clearing out the illusions, they'll be able to clear out him. It's Beautiful. a big kill. Exactly what they need, and we'll give them a chance to take their tier one tower. They'll slow down Nightfall's farm. They might be able to take Tormentor too. Wisdom Rune is already claimed, but I think they can at least deny this one away with that move. Nicely done, good trap. Four to four, he's <laughs> so quiet. Still a very slow paced game, but very nice moves coming out there. Scanning potential, of course, it is still there, and you know, whenever there's this Zeus in the game, and when Topson has the, the Shard and the Manta, the, the way he's going to be able to kind of push waves out, cut waves, and he's always make it difficult for the game, the map, to get into a position where Pet Boom will be able to shove down a lane with the five of them. And hey, if the Morph isn't able to address or deal with the PL, Topson could be able to if he's, if he's actually able to survive in these fights. I mean, as yeah, we were saying at the start, you know, back in the day, Zeus already had its Dyer's strength against top. PL. Nowadays, with the right-click capabilities as well, it's it's something else to add in there that will help clear through the illusions. I'm cur so curious to see how this is all going to kick off when they all just start to, when the team fights actually start happening rather than these small individual little pickoffs. Mant, I believe, done now for GPK. BKB done for Miero. I mean, BB and Beppu is still hitting some big timings, but Tundra, they're also just kind of matching these timings. Uh, it's all going to kick off pretty soon, you yeah. can only imagine. Toby. Maybe Very not with blink. this Aegis, though, because only a minute left on the Aegis here for GPK. Ah, never mind, they do want to try. They've got four seconds it. left to go with this. They got three item timings, right? BKB, Manta, it's actually four, including the pipe. I mean, they're going yeah, to be so strong around the pipe. Topson, he's Topson. down the lane. There's the jump for GPK. He's not able to get in with the dragon. Toby's now. quick. Another turnaround. White Mon, he's in with the hook shot over towards Miro. They'll turn and focus the clockwork first. They'll turn down with the demonic perk. BKB pop Miro. The roar on Topson. The They've got the control on the Topson. They close the gap. They're setting up here with the 
disruption. They'll be able to surround Toxton. They'll bring the Zeus down as well. And more. CPK, he's not done. Dives the tier two, gets the jump in over towards the Rubik because he'll try and run away with the pig pole. He's back up to the high ground. CPK. He's diving pretty deep here. Aegis is going to go away in a couple of seconds. They'll pull back. Look at their health. I mean, the pipe absolutely coming into play. I just saw Zeus not able to get many spells off, of course, but I see a rolling thunder come in and nobody's really taking too much damage. I mean, this is the, the power that you'd expect from Bet Boom with the group they up group potential up. they have. Especially uh, if Thompson if Thompson gets caught, the fight's going to be super and, difficult. And, he provides yeah. all the damage in the early game right now. And that was a fight where the initiation, it, you know, it wasn't a clean initiation either, but it didn't matter in the long run. They're still able to persist and chase him down and get the big kill. Yeah, Miero just somehow finding the angle to get that roar. It was stolen again, honestly. Nine class finds a secondary steal, but from that point, the fight was already over. They got completely surrounded on Thompson. 5k lead. Good strike there from Bat Boom. Looking at Toronto in the mid, but yeah, with the, the pipe even on his own, he's not an easy target to go for. Let's see if Bat Boom's able to hold on to the tier one as Tundra are approaching. BKB up in 20. Dyer's middle tower is under on Piero. And no, one's really can, no one really can hit this tower. I mean, Toby's trying to, but this is a little awkward for a Pango to walk up and hit this one. They are in the neighborhood, Bet Boom. They can bring the fight if they want to. How's Pure doing? Butterflies soon finished. He's getting his good farm here. But is, is it going to be enough versus this? Just how much Bet Boom is starting to accumulate as a team overall. Blink now on Toby, so easier way to follow up at least on these hook shots. And, uh, and to just sort of get in position to be able to clear through the illusions of Nightfall in these yep. team fights when Nightfall does start to get more involved. They'll have some pretty solid, like, kind of illusion clear. Hey, if they can survive long enough to get the spells off. They're feeling their strength right now. Moonlight Shadow to cruise across the map. They want to find a pickoff here. Obi, can he hide? He can. Next few moments just feel like, yeah, Bat Boom just dictating the pace, looking for these constant kills, while Tundra maybe needing a little bit more time before they want Pure to start getting involved too. Just, I'm wondering when the timing for him to get involved is. Maybe this butterfly will be enough. I mean, try. they're going to go for it, so. They have a haste rune as well on Topson. This could be a, this I mean, could be a difference maker if he can distance himself. This really could be the sort of make or break team fight here. Yeah. Tier two. Toby. The fortification, they'll scout things out with the Thunder Ghost They're going to use Stolen the Roar against still. Raiden onto Mira. They've killed the Beastmaster. They hung on to that Roar. Already, you can see Wymon just going straight for Nightfall on the back of the fight. They're trying to chase and catch this PL. And for return with the view. Blade slow, but they're closing the gap in. They've got the lift up with the telekinesis. Nightfall, he's falling low. Get the doppelganger off, but it won't matter. He'll go down. Tucker, wow. they'll hold. Beautiful. I nine class <laughs> the stolen roar. Gero can't move, just gets fully locked down and get on Nightfall as well. Can they turn it into more? 10 seconds. Roche could spawn. Such good defensive plays. Perfect. What more could you ask for from the Rubik? The literal best spell that he can steal. He's got, he's had it now twice and he held it for that last fight. That brilliant smoke play. Yeah. From Tundren at a time where they, they had to hit. And they certainly did. Couldn't allow Bet Boom to continue to get this momentum. They shut down a bit of the lead that Bet Boom was building up. Hey, Nightfall, he's looking fragile. That's two times now he just gets surrounded. He has he no die. help from his teammates and he's just gone. Let's see if they try and... Make a move quickly again here, Bet Boom. I mean, as you say, the Roshan is going to be of huge interest to both teams. We'll see it come back up in just under a minute. Feels like initiation really is going to be the name of the game for this one. Who gets the jump first? Who's able to pick off one of these targets? As we saw there, if Tundra gets the initiation, just one target's just dead and they have to just full dis just disperse. Probably going to be the same case in the other way. But Vision Dead. is okay. definitely a problem, I would say, for Bet Boom. Playing versus this Zeus and Clockwork, it is a bit difficult for them to get that jump in some of these instances. Still getting a great farm, though. Ags DK, level 18 finished. Another timing hit. Perhaps they're going to look to fight right back at their own initiation. Themselves, maybe they're yeah. thinking about maybe making this move from the mid. Top lane, the tower's gone. Tundra, they get out and they're able to take down a tier two themselves. Roshan in 10 seconds. That's going to be a huge fight around the pit, absolutely. Let's see. A little bit of a pause here. Hopefully. We're able to get the game back on pretty soon as this is a pretty pivotal moment. Yeah, these are super tense moments. Position wise, Tundra. Yeah, obviously in the the, the the place to start. I mean, do you, do you imagine if, when they see it come back up, will they go straight in and try and do it quickly, or do you kind of hover around and look to set up for the fight first? For Tundra. 
Thunder I think they probably want to set up for the fight. Yeah. They have this new Thunder Gods. It's all it's initiation, right? I think it's really going to be who gets the jump first. If if Toby's able to get free rolling Thunders off, then the fight's going to be problematic for Bedlam. But if Toby dies at the start, and who do you who do you, you know if you're Tundra, who do you ideally want to lock down first? You want to just Miro. get Miro, so he I think can't Miro. Roll? Yeah, I, I mean ideally any of the cores first, yeah. but I think Miro is probably one of the more important ones. Uh, Boom's heading in save. He's going to blink it aggressively. Just drops himself. Isn't able to get any sort of setup. Tundra, they'll retreat. They're backing off. They don't want to take the fight with the information that's been given to them right now. That's going to give them the rush. They're playing full, fully defensive here. I mean, it is this sort of understandable why they are as scared as they are. I mean, they're going to smoke them, try and make it back over. Maybe they can get back in time. Toby's, I mean, Toby's considering it the least. They're going to have rockets to scout. And it's in turn, scared. it's enough to scare Bet Boom off. Most teams very, very scared about how they go about committing for this Roshan. Both teams want the jump so badly. And the vision right now, I mean, looking at the way that Tundra's placed these boards, they have some really nice sneaky ones. I've never actually seen this uh, one above there. Yeah, right there. That's a good one. It's just out of vision of the sentry. And Tundra's still under the cover of smoke. They see everybody. They're getting a really they good wrap around everybody. the east. They're trying to set things up. They're going to look into the tree line. They're going to be able to find the two. They're on the both. They're going to be able to get the jump on three back. Nightfall. It's a beautiful initiation for Tundra. And they're ready to go for more. They've caught GP. He's out. He wants to be none of the part, none of this. Oh my God! What a I mean, game-winning ward! Around. Look at this. I mean, this ward is just next level. I mean, it just catches them perfectly. It re I mean, it really could be as big as game-winning as you say, because the whole momentum is going to shift in their advantage now. They're going to be able to get this Roshan. Oh, I mean, that was beautiful. Like they literally just I mean, saw the two. Like they saw two people just standing on top of each other. They yeah. just get the perfect jump. It, re Toby. it really was just not a chance at all for Bet Boom to fight back when they get jumped like that. Can't even get a single spell off. It seems. I think what? Yeah. There's a dragon tail and a breathe fire. But check this that, out again. Smashed. Look at them. They're hugging each other. Picture perfect. Super easy for Pure and Toby to just lay down the damage onto the both of them. Nightfalls. Uh, he looks so squishy. Again and again and again. If they get on him. And now an Aegis and a Cheese. A very, very good smoke there. And, and maybe one that Betbin weren't con you know, anticipating completely because of the fact that Tundra, they backed off initially pretty far, but then at the same time, they were very quick to get back out and get round behind them. It pays off. Nine to six. Tundra now with a 3k lead. Aegis and, and Cheese in their hands. And Pure now having a massive separation between him and Nightfall. Full BKB finished after Butterfly. Nightfall can't fight him. He cannot fight him toe-to-toe -to -toe anymore. Level 20 is also picked up, so he's got the waveform attack targets, which is one of the biggest talents you can have versus a PL well, also. In the mid, they're trying to, to go on them. I mean, Look at Pure, though. Follow up. They go through straight away onto Toronto Tokyo. They burst him um, immediately, and now with the hook shot, they My get Pure's the got no fear. They get the lockdown, the pushback is a quick couple of kills. Tundra really getting the ball rolling now. All right, they, they blew this game open. That one play there, getting that dream initiation, shutting I mean, them down yeah. again, getting Aegis and Cheese. Pure now has a, such a big item advantage. He feels so safe. He can just get involved. He can just jump forward. He just waveformed in aggressively because he's got BKB. I mean, they might be ready to push the high ground. Still with, uh, nearly four minutes on this Aegis. Tundra now to position 30 minutes in that they're the ones threatening the base of Bet Boom. Fortification comes to an end. How do you stop here? A Nightfall just not ready to fight right now. And very, very far behind his counterpoint. Counterpart here, that 5k gold plus between the two carries. Brax is just dropping. Pure can just stand his ground, even versus these illusions. Miro still not up an arrow. Dodges it. Backdoor does kick back in. He's got five stacks of poison, but he's oh, hitting there healthy. we go. The, the granite golem doing his job down mid. <laughs> Nicely done. I mean, that will keep the Rax alive. The Rax going down. A nice micro. Heads up stuff here from Miro. I didn't even notice it. They do still have the creep wave coming in on the bottom lane. So Tundra, they can maybe turn to look to taking this tier two and maybe trying to make the, the move towards the high ground from this angle instead. Don't think they have to leave though by any means. Pure has this Paladin Storm, so he's just healing right back up to full off the creeps. And with Butterfly BKB, he feels more than safe. I mean, they could just keep going. Go for the I Tormentor. The tormentor again. Absolutely. Taking a lot away from Bet Boom here. An 11,000 gold lead. And Bet Boom, now that they're playing from this sort of position, I mean, you can only imagine with the way that they wanted to approach this with their draft, this their strategy, they, they be. wanted to be ahead. Yeah. Falling behind this badly at 31 minutes in, it's not going to be easy to recover from. Yeah, it feels it feels like they've lost that timing that they ideally wanted with their auras just building up and overall massing and 
getting that gold advantage. It just didn't really end up happening. Tundra just finds two incredible fights. And now there's just a, yeah, there's just such a clear separation between those cores. And Pure doing, of course, that strength morph all the way up to full. Grab Shield Rune, shift back down, and then how the hell do you kill him? He could just walk in, actually, versus your entire team, potentially. I mean, yeah, they're certainly going to want to go again. I mean, look at this. He, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's quite unkillable at this point here with this. That boom. And this ward, another ward that's just a sneaky position. Look at Whitemon. It's the vision. He sees his entire Bet Boom lineup walking back to the base. Up here. Absolutely He's ready to just step up there in the mid if he wants to. We'll see how much respect he feels he needs to give. I mean, yeah, he knows how unkillable he is. And he's he's going to walk up. His effective HP is through the roof when he's got this shield rune. I mean, how can they stop him? They're slowly getting through the shield rune. Now get a good amount of stun onto him. So they can pressure in the walls, but Toby's in ready to back him up. Jumps forward with the shield crash. Just to secure it. Oh, with the backdoor protections kick back in. Okay. The back off roars out on the top, and they go straight for the deuce. They, they got topped it. Now. He stepped up too far. They're going to look to try and chase him for more. They'll turn now over Toby. Toby Nightfall's in on top of him. It's going to be a second kill here for Boom. The defense is good. How did they catch Tops in there? Was that a? Bl I guess it was the blink reveal. Yeah, pure. He's going to go for the BKB TP out with waveform. He's away. White Mon also able to pull himself back to safety with the hook shot. So the I rest of them get deals. out. Those are big. Catching both cores there. I had to just with blink roar. I guess he just didn't see it coming from the side. Tops is the one who gets caught. And now Nightfall, Nightfall actually is able to attack for once. I think that's the first first fight that I've seen I, him I, be I, able to play as hero. Now, whereas with the sort of the farm difference, it's not really easy for him to do anything about pure right now. But the other heroes, if his team's able to land these stuns, okay. as soon as Nightfall surrounds them with his illusions, and will still be able to clean up these kills. Nine class. Oh. He's got the nice glimmer. Good. Okay, he's alright. Definitely don't want to give up too many of these kills to this Phantom Lancer. Nah, it's going to be quite the, the potential for late game battles here between Pure and Nightfall this game, especially with that push there for being shut down. They keep the racks alive again. I'm surprised. I cannot believe they the, just keep this racks I mean, alive. Fact, I, think, I, I don't know if once again it was Miro cutting the waves or something, but the, the fact that this backdoor protection keeps kicking back in, it's put a stop to the push twice. And gives them a good alleviation to be able to get that farm back. A 6k swing just off of that defense there. Tormentors, they'll continue just going for Tundra. They've got all their shards. Now they're just getting that golden XP. Topson has to stay further back. Yeah, it's a lot of their damage right yeah. now. A lot of their sort of just sort of split damage. I mean, it's pure. he can kind of focus one target and with the insane amount of farm he has, he will kill them. But dealing with sort of the, the just the five-man presence of Bet Boom, they need Topson alive. Dyer are scanning. And Pure has damage scaling up even more now with a completed Daedalus. Well, spending up for that does mean cool. he won't be playing with buyback. No phylactery. And, and no Aegis right now. He's playing to pl kill the PL, right? He's playing for the waveform attack target with the Daedalus and stuff like that, rather than going for your phylactery single target since he's playing for his PL. It's probably the few times that you do see a Morphling kind of change the build, I feel. And I guess versus the summons too, right? He's playing versus the golems and the boars and hawks and etc. and stuff like that, so... That's cool. It's going to get hard to burst the PL, though, with Nightfall close to the heart. He is getting big. Especially if Topson's dead. If Topson's alive, then that's going to be different, right? They'll be able to always go for this kill onto the PL, but... They're giving Topson all the XP, too. They really want him to get that level 20 talent. Level 19 right now down bottom. That'll help him pierce through those tanky heroes a little bit better. I imagine both teams in a game where the back and forth has been as such. They'll probably wait for the next... Rose Sham, we're going to see when it's going to be back up in a minute. And look to keep... I mean, the, the name of the game is still going to be initiation of who gets those jumps and who's able to find those backline Dyer's targets. And for Miro, we've got to keep eyes on him, continuing to sort of make the micro happen, get these, you know, the, the creep cutting done. So even when Tundra's approaching the base, Ooh. they only have limited time to try and pressure the building. Pretty cool rune. There's an amplified damage up top. Dyer's PL not the best holder of it, of course, but GPK could look to grab that one up. A GPK also has his Octarine finished. And he's got his 20 talent too, so he is quite a bit of a threat too. He's very obnoxious for these supports. Topson, of course, didn't get the cheese off in the last fight, so we'll still have that. Yeah, yeah you got full chain, full chain stunned. Level 25 already hit on Pure. So four levels ahead of the PL. They're going to head out. It's getting close to the point where Roshan may respawn, so Bet yep. Boom. 
They know that this is the time where they do start to have to take these risks leaving the base. The Tundra is going to be popped. And Thompson knows what's up. What item timings do they have too? They did get, yeah, I mean GPK has the amp damage and his Octarine, so... Maybe looking to try to catch that before that Roche does spawn. And I mean, they want to smoke up themselves here, Tundra. They seem to know where they are. Night class in the front line. It's it's risky. I mean, it's, it's up to sort of the telekinesis or the hook shot in terms of just getting that initiation. But even then, Pepum have ways to respond to it with the potential disruption saves. They have vision here on the side. I think they just saw pure for a second. Pepum looking to set up here. And they get a big jump. Mira would be a pretty good target, but he's going to be the one to get the jump. They're on Toby. They go straight for the Pango. The raw into the arrow. It connects perfectly, but White One is in with the hook He's got the cog down onto the pure. He's fighting back. He's killed off Miro. You see him try and jump to the side, turns into the PO. He's looking towards Nightfall. He's trying to disengage. He'll get the Spirit Lance out over towards him. He continues to close the gap and saves him with the, the save with that disruption to try and help Nightfall out here. But Pure remains on top of him. Nightfall's GPK's able to on top of him. the doppelganger. GPK forcing over towards the Zeus. Thompson's able to heal back up the full HP. And now he can turn and dish out the damage to GPK as they'll chase out the Dragonite. GPK has to run. It's Pure. Can he get away? Tries Pure's to close the gap once more with Waveform. GPK trying to juke around the trees, but there's no, no he can one else to run. Pure. And the claim another here with the help of Thompson's damage. Now Nightfall. He's going to try and tackle this here with Toronto Tokyo trying to take on the three of them. They'll go for top. They're hitting the real hero. They killed the Zeus, but Pure. He's able to snipe Toronto Tokyo with another waveform. Now he looks back over to Nightfall. Nightfall's able to kill off White Ball with the illusions. It's four dead on Tundra. They're Only kiting. Pure remains. They're just kiting. Pure is now isolated. Nightfall. Going for the waveform TP. Whoop. Anything to stop it? They don't. He's away. Pure will manage to make it out of there. But the casualties are high in that fight. I Honestly, Aviana's Feather just did so much work for Nightfall. I didn't see if he got it like during the fight or something like that, but this evasion actually allows him to stand his ground in the fight longer than I expected. Full vision, of course, too, in that one. That really was the difference maker. The was, fact that they just couldn't kill the Nightfall PL. Really? Just it was close, too. Yeah, Pure's best efforts. He was chasing Nightfall pretty yep. much throughout the whole fight, killing off supports left, right, and center. He was. As he tried to focus the PL, but... Couldn't do it on his own. Nightfall gets away. In that fight too, like where it gets toward the uh, dire side on that hill, he was hitting the real PL with almost all his hits and the evasion. I'm pretty sure it was like three, four, five different evasions that come came out there. Because Pure hits hard. This, he has a data. This could be big though. I mean, Toby's gonna pop the Rolling Thunder just in case they were trying to sneak the Roshan with the three of them on Bet Boom that Ooh, were alive. That's that means there's no Rolling Thunder for it the does. fight. And Bet Boom's gonna be back up with GPK in five seconds. Toronto and, goes back in the game in ten seconds, and they. Obviously pushing out this top lane with the illusions, they know where and Pure and Toby are. Two item reveals as well, too. Hex now finished up on Miro with a timeless relic. This roar and this Hex. I mean, and this opening! Yeah, they pop the leak because they get the disruption into the Hex! They got him! Pure's gone! That's the reveal! And now they're ready to go for more, they're gonna look over towards Toby, they get him with the size of the Minecraft, I believe, and Toby's gone as well! Holy crap! Awesome. 90 seconds! I mean, that's huge! Miro! Able to do it there now. Indeed, they've got the setup to go over towards Roche and look to take it. It's going to hit the 40 minutes, head to the other side of the map. They could prepare he, down bottom. He did get that Roche and get the push going. He had no idea this was coming. Big That's, reveal. He, I think the courier was dead for some time. He had a ton of gold saved up on this Beastmaster. Full purchases it, and they have an Orchid, so the lockdown was there. Yeah. And now it's a Roche, so back the other way we go. Bet boom. Finding a huge window back into this game. And it's a pretty big one, too. A refresher shard. It is. Pretty massive that they can get. I mean, double roar, double hex. Could be massive. Yeah, I think yeah, Miro's gonna want to take that, absolutely. And they only have, yeah, there's three of them up right now in Tundra. They'll scout it out. I mean, maybe they could go for some sort of hook shot steal. It's dying too if fast. If he wants to, White Mon. He's not in range. It's too far. Can't make it in time. Still not in range. They've got Just it. Not in range. He just picked it up here for Nightfall. And indeed, Mira, he's got that refresher shard. So already, yeah, that clutch play there coming in with the hex. Next time, he's going to be able to do it twice. And he can just, he can self break the Lincolns now at this point. He can go for just a blink hex, refresh, roar hex, and just go for that because he doesn't need the full instance of the stable. If they catch, honestly, even maybe one of these disables pre BKB on the morph, yep. he could just die. Absolutely. If they get the jump on either Pure or Thompson yep. at the start of the fight, it's going to be very difficult for Tundra to fight four versus five. Eliminating one of these cores could set up for Bet Boom themselves to get back on with the push. Initiations. I'm in a crazy game so far. 15 to 14, less than 1k gold difference. We expected this, these to go the distance in most of yeah, them with Bad Boom Tundra, and we're getting it. Stuff. Yep. Yeah, absolutely are. The PL versus Morph matchup, of course, now starting to really kick into play. Thompson, the full refresh. So, again, if he can get in position okay. and get his spells off, it's going to be a crazy amount of damage. He got Timeless Relic, too, right? Yeah. And they got all it's their neutrals. Yeah, Tundra just, I think, got three or four of their tier four neutrals, and Aviana Feather also for pure. 
Well, let's see if Tundra's prepared for this, because Bet Boon smoked up. Tundra likely to anticipate this. They're sitting on the high ground here, staying in the base. They know that yeah. Bet Boon with this Aegis Radiant Cheese Refresher Shard, they're going to be trying for these sort of plays. Nightfall also hits 25 now. So Pure, he was 20, he was four level advantage over the PL in those last few moments. And just from these two quick instances, this PL now completely caught up. And that's going to make it a lot harder for them to catch him. This Ooh, doppelganger CD. Tono Tokyo steps over in the range of Whitemont and Pure. Nightfall. They know where he is. He's got the Aegis. Very, very hard target to kill now. Deep vision also, as we saw. I don't know when, I, I guess, save placed this deep ward all the way on the left side right now. This could catch Tundra off guard. Tundra now having the ward control here around the Ancients, but that left ward, it's spotting out the Pango right now. So they do have some good information being given from it. That was a very sneaky place from the SG. And to push forward and push them into that area. They're going to get the jump over towards Whitemon. They look to get the clock first, but Toby, he's in with the rolling Big roll. Get the jump on the two of them. He's controlling that for GPK, but they will still lose Whitemon. He's got five back available if he wants Pure to get one. back in on this fight. He's okay. He's shifting up into strength. Very, very tanky. He's There's done. Arrowed. Around. It's a long stun. Can they stay pure? They, they can cannot. 100 he's seconds. the game for 100. Bet boom. Get the kill. They'll try and push him for more Nightfall. Fully low and some destruction comes down because he does still have that aegis to protect him he's He'll alive be able to reset jump out of the bait he got hit by a full duration arrow and then i think roared afterwards yeah, as well too one came in i think he got full control and they had nothing to get him out of that he's dead for 80 seconds i mean the fights are so chaotic there's so many things around him. i'm sure they couldn't even get to click on him with any of their abilities he literally just got arrowed yeah roar hexed arrowed full cc'd and they're absolutely going to want to push this up to the high ground. They've still got the Aegis to play with Bebboom. They lost nothing in terms of lives in that last play. The tier two is going to be going down. Let's see how Tundra's high ground defense is. They've got to try and pull it together without Pure for a nearly a minute. Topton has to be very careful with his position. If he gets jumped, it's going to be game over. They do have, I mean, fantastic ways, of course, to clear the wave. Tower not taking much damage whatsoever here, not just yet. Be sending in the illusions. Pushing Tundra back, it's hard for them to step up. They're at the least going to lose tier three. What if he gets there? I mean, they're going to jump onto the Pango. Nice lift. They'll try and lift him back to safety. They've got the Glimmer as well. No detection on the front line, so he'll be able to back up to the Fountain. Toby will live for now. Nice save from Nine Class. But the tier three is gone. The racks are exposed. Jump forward. There's the They get the roar. Mirror. He gets the perfect jump once again. Topson's out. They got what they came for. 80 seconds. Now they can keep pushing. These two crucial heroes dead without the money for buyback. 10 seconds, Pure is going to respawn. Might just buy back and give the respect to it. They got so much they out did. of these moves. They get the barracks. That's what, two or three, two fights where Pure is unable to do a single thing. We've seen Tundra being able to sort of swing the game back in their favor before, but now it's at a tougher point than ever. There's just too much control for this Morphling. Miro's itemization is perfect. I love this, honestly, love this hex. Now ready to go down the mid. 40 seconds, they want to try to force as much as they can. Let's see what they can do. 40 seconds on the respawn for Topson and about 40 seconds as well on the, the Aegis timer here still for Nightfall. These rockets don't do much. That's here, three is gone. They're also pressuring the bottom as well here with the illusions. Pure's not even in here. He's like, I need to, I'm just gonna farm. I, I'm doing nothing, just watching the I mean, push. It's just so hard for anyone to step up and, and start the deep push here on Tundra. Pure 800 from buyback, Zeus 200 from buyback when they do respawn. That's the mid racks going. We'll be able to get them. Bet boom. They'll probably back off now. Topsum respawning. The Aegis about to expire, but they certainly got way more than they came for here in, in, in favor of themselves. 12k lead now. Two sets of racks taken. The items just continue to fly out for Bet Boom. That's so impressive. Now they're going to have continuous momentum, just always shoving in that mid and top. They can just set up for bottom. A full Aghanim's now on the SD as well. They just got so rich. Just what I've been waiting. Oh, and an arcane rune, of course, too, for the D for the DK. And hiding his hitting his level 25 as well, too. So yep. AoE Dragon Tail, so even more forms of control to be able to trip up this morph. Overwhelming blink as well. I mean he's as good as ready to end this one GPK. And I think for the first time in the game also, seeing Nightfall, he's top net worth. Yep. Even though it's he taken this there. long, but he's he gotten got there. there. And it's yeah, it's starting to look real strong for him. And this is the sort of positions that, you know, Nightfall on his PL, he doesn't tend to lose games. No. At this point, although it's been a long time. Finish it. Yeah. That's a tower. 
slowly falling. Tundra, what can they pull together here on the high ground? They've got everybody up, and they do have buybacks available on Topston and Pure. It's getting whittled down, though. All these illusions, the Raxons are dropping. And what do you do about this Dragon Knight? They're these dropping quick. Just doing it, taking down the Rax on their own. And Pure has to show himself to clear the illusion, but it's so something. scary when he shows. I mean, Toby and Nightclass are trying to get him from the side. Oh my, every time Pure shows, I'm so scared. They insta-break the Lincolns, and he just has to be at the ready for some type of save and protection. But he has to be the one to clear these Illus. Nobody else can. They're trying with the jump. It's a good jump here for Toby. He's able to get him with a stun onto the two of them. Turn over towards Toronto Tokyo. Toronto Tokyo able to leap away. The pot is under the Ghost Wrath. Tundra. They're going to try and chase Bebum out. The hook's there for White Mon. It's deep. Immediately silence. He's brought down low. They'll kill off the clockwork. White Mon out for 90. It's no way too back. far. Now saved. Somebody purge over towards Toby. He's able to swashbuckle to the side. Now it's a four versus five defense that. Tundra's gonna have to try and put together. They're already struggling with the five of them available. And Miro just is holding on to that roar, waiting for the opportunity and the Pure steps gone. up. The pressure here from the Manta of the DK, it'll do it. The Mega Creeps are out. Wow. <laughs> Save definitely feeling himself now after this. Such a difficult game now for Tundra. They're up against the Mega Creeps, they're already as we saw struggling to pull together a defense when they weren't having the Mega Creeps against them. Now that they're there... Topson, honestly, I'm watching Topson spamming every single spell to attempt to push these illusions off, and he just can't. Piped illusions just with this DK magic resist, and they just so stand strong. there. Yeah, they just take no damage from him. A refresher of uh, Mira, so we saw what he was able to do the refresher shard. Now he's got the orb yep. himself. A good jump, a good stun, a good hex from him. We'll close the game up. I mean, yeah, Pure needs his, needs the longest BKB as possible, so buys that with that refresher to try to have it. It's just so scary, because every time I'm seeing him show, it's just even for a fraction of a second, he could just die. They break the Lincolns, they get the CC, and he's just dead. Roshan, minute till it's up. Likely that Bebboom may wait it out, and I think highly likely that Tundra are going to do whatever they can to try and get the waves pushed out, so they can look for the fight around the Roshan. I don't know if sitting back and taking the last fight on the high ground is going to be favorable to them. They've got to try and do... Do what they did before, but now obviously in a much more <laughs> difficult fashion. Yeah. See if they can get some sort of wrap around, get some sort of crazy jump to the, catch Pepboom by surprise. The problem is they're that much tankier now though too, right? 5,000 HP DK, 4,000 HP on the PL compared to that long time ago where they were just squishy when they jumped on top of them. And Pepboom, all they really have to do at this point is hug. Nobody has to leave each other. All these lanes are going to push in naturally. And they just have to wait for this rush, wait for Tundra to come and meet them. We'll see how hungry Tundra are to make a risky move. They have to shove this bottom wave super far if they're going to look to do that. At the moment, they've got Toby on the case. Happens. Trying to get that wave pushed out. He, he's scared, though, I think. I think he's also like, we don't see anybody on the map. If he shoves that lane, he could just get caught. And I don't believe that he does have buyback. Yeah, he doesn't, so... They need everything they can get on Tundra to try to withstand this pressure. Yeah, but boom, able to position themselves now. Between the Roshan and the base, knowing that if Tundra's going to make a play, it's going to be in this direction. Rocket to scout. They will see that the Rosh is up on the side of Tundra. Top lane and mid are in a pretty okay position if they want to attempt, but Batboom is, actually isn't going for that Rosh just yet. They're looking to go for a kill. They see pure. Another arcane rune for GPK. Tundra might not expect this. It's a bait. Yeah, he's going to jump It's a bait. He gets caught. Straight into the catch here. He's out. They'll turn over the walls. Nine class. It's going to be two dead. Toby has to roll away with the thunder. But that could be it as he's out for 90 pure. Doesn't have buyback gold. That's got to be it. They're ready to run it down mid or run it down the bottom lane here. Bet boom. That's the Thompson. kill that they needed. Thompson shows himself. Just desperately trying to push the waves out. And Miro, he's got him with the Hex. The disruption set up there for stage. They surround Thompson, he's out. He does have buyback. But it would just be the three of them against the five-man push coming in from Betboom. Oh, Betboom shot calling, just next level. How many fights is this now? I, what, three, four times I feel like Pure just got good to do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Keep the Hex. In. That'll be the buyback from White Mom. They've got to try it. Four versus five. It's off the pot to refresh in the second round. of Thunder goes draft, but they're in with the stun over the walls. Nine class. Nine class caught with the hex. He's gone. As they can continue to beat down onto the tier fours, clear out the creep wave. Tundra now three versus five. What do they have left? Thompson's GPK caught. in with the stun. The stun is the roar as well. They're on to Thompson. Thompson's gone. White Mud as well.
well. This is going to be game. GG is called. Bedford will take game one. Wow. What a turnaround.